back up to remember that we're talking about the workout as a stimulus. And as a stimulus, the way the body is seeing it is it is a negative, threatful event. You know, we all have it in our mind that working out is a good thing to do, but it is in that it is a hormetic, a hormetic stressor to the body. Um, and in, the, in that context, it is a negative thing. But that hormetic stressor produces a positive adaptive response. So to answer your question, me as an emergency physician, you know, if I'm working a day shift at seven in the morning, used to, I would go in at six and do a workout right before I went to work. And there is a dip in immunity in the first, you know, 90 minutes or so afterwards, two hours. That's part of that hormetic response may not have been the smartest thing in the world to do, but, um, the overall response from it is strongly positive. So speaking in terms of, um, myokines again, one of the paradoxical things is that, um, interleukin six was kind of the prototypical myokine that was first discovered and interleukin six is a bad player cytokine. It's very pro-inflammatory in the same way that TNF alpha is very pro-inflammatory. And it was strongly associated with carcinogenesis. So, you know, it, it was very tumor promoting. So when you did high intensity exercise, what they were seeing was a massive spike in interleukin six, a hundred fold off of its baseline. And everyone's like, oh boy, that can't be good because this is like a bad player. But what they ended up finding is that this massive spike in interleukin-6, what it did was it significantly down-regulated interleukin-6 receptors. So that at baseline, circulating interleukin-6 was much less biologically active, and it ended up being protective against inflammatory conditions and cancers. Um, so to the extent that you're invoking this um, immune threatful state um, in many ways that, you know, are probably too complex for even for us to understand, we do got to understand that just like the inroad, the momentary weakening of the muscle being a threat which promotes the adaptive response of muscle growth and strengthening, the acute threat to the immune system is a threatful stimulus whose adaptive response is an improvement in immune function overall after you have adapted and recovered. If we were working with, with populations or somebody was, was, was an individual who had um, a, 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 an, an illness or, or a disease that compromised their immune system, would perhaps... Uh, theoretically speaking, instead of doing a full body routine, reducing to a, some kind of split routine, potentially reduce any negative impact there might be in, in those circumstances? Or, or, is it, or, or am I overthinking this, perhaps? Um, maybe overthinking it a little bit, but um, in my shop, we get a lot of, not a lot, but we frequently have had opportunity to train people um, that are undergoing chemotherapy. And our local oncologists are kind of up on our literature and are very um, supportive of their patients coming to train both pre-chemotherapy, during chemotherapy, and after. And during chemotherapy, what we do is we just allow their um, fatigue level to dictate their intensity level as it must, it's, a, it's not something that, you know, you as a trainee or we as trainers really have to worry about because it will declare itself organically. As they accumulate a certain amount of fatigue, how hard they can push themselves auto-regulates. So we just bring them in and we train them like we always train them, but we start to see some drop off in their intensity as they get deeper and deeper into their regimen 
and we just allow that to auto adjust. And at some point, usually in the last couple of weeks of their regimen, they'll drop out altogether. So the last two weeks of chemo, and then a week or two after completion, we just know that they're going to be gone for three weeks or a month, and then they come back when they feel up to snuff again. Mm. But I think that still that whole hormetic trigger and the adaptive response to it is intact. And there's also, you know, there, there's good evidence to show that there are release of myokines that um, are synergistic with their chemotherapy in terms of, you know, being active against the tumor that's trying to be treated. I mean, it's been shown both in vitro and in vivo that, um, I think it's interleukin-8, um, is inhibitory to the growth of breast cancer tumor. So, um, you know, to the extent that, you know, the, the myokines all have a massive net anti-inflammatory effect to the extent that you can kind of keep up a protocol through that sort of process um, is probably beneficial.